Well, welcome back, everybody. This is the Brandon Ivy Show coming back with you with the new tip of the day. And the tip of the day today is the philosophy of performance. The philosophy of performance. And this is a spin off of when a lot of people want to talk about having the right mindset and uh, what you're supposed to be doing to become successful. And it all starts with the mind, but it also starts with your core belief system. What is your philosophy? And every single person out there is motivated by a certain philosophy. There's a couple of them out there that most people fall into these four basic categories. And the first one is the philosophy of minimum wage. Ah, think about that. The philosophy of minimum wage. And most Americans actually have this philosophy. It's the philosophy of I will get paid whatever somebody is willing to pay me. If a company's bottom line is $5 an hour, then guess what? That's how much money I'm going to make because that's how much money the company pays me. One thing Jim Rome says all the time is, you know, when he was a young lad and his mentor uh, asked him about making more money and Jim said, of course I want to make more money, but this is all the company pays me. And his mentor told him, no, that's just all the company pays you. Are there other people in the company that make more money than you? And the answer is yes. But that's your only mentality. That's your only mindset. That's your only philosophy. The philosophy of minimum wage. But then you have people out there that want just a little bit more. But they go about it a certain way. And their way of going about it is having the philosophy of waiting. The philosophy of waiting where I will wait my turn. My time will come one day. Where if I just continue doing what I'm doing, eventually I'm going to get a raise from $5 an hour to $6 an hour. Maybe when my next yearly review comes around, I get a raise every year of that 2% problem is how long is it going to take you to start to move up the ranks if you're waiting for somebody to give you something sadly there are many people out there that have the philosophy of waiting then you have those who are a little bit more aggressive and they have a philosophy of demand They demand something. They feel it's almost entitlement. I demand that you pay me more. And they go about doing it a different way. Their own certain way. And their way is, how about we create a strike force, a union. That if we band together, we can demand the company will pay us more money. Not because we're doing anything extra special but because we demand for it to happen. We demand the federal government to protect us. We demand to have social security, a retirement. We demand to have health care. So you have those individuals. The philosophy of demand. Let me tell you where 99% of rich people operate. It's called the philosophy of performance. The philosophy of production. One thing my grandfather always taught me and my father is that if you're going to be a janitor, you be the best janitor you can possibly be. If you're going to be a street sweeper, you be the best street sweeper you possibly could be. Wallace D. Waddle states that success is not in doing certain things, but doing things in a certain way way everybody is matched with the same 24 hours in a day everybody has the same opportunities as everybody else but what one person does with that time and how they approach that time may be completely different than a different individual which is why they get certain results success is doing things in a certain way not doing certain things See, the philosophy of performance basically means no matter what it is that you're doing, work as hard as you possibly can. Become the best you could possibly be. Better yet, what Jim Rohn also says is work harder 
than what they're actually paying you for. Do more than what you're getting paid for. See, unions don't like that, Tom, that concept. Do more than what I'm getting paid for? You realize most companies that survive, most companies that thrive, they thrive because they provide more in value than they ask for in cost. By doing so, you make yourself more valuable to whoever or whatever it is you're performing for. If you're on a 9 to 5 job and you're putting in more work than you're actually getting paid for, who do you think the company is going to notice? Who becomes more valuable to the company? If you're an athlete and you perform more than what you're being paid for, the next time your contract comes around, guess what's going to happen? You're now more valuable. One thing Jim Rome also says, and yes, I am a big, big follower of Jim Rome is work on yourself harder than you work on your job. Work on yourself harder than you work on your job. There's only one other philosophy out there that can yield you good results, but ultimately will be your downfall. And it's called the philosophy of fear. The philosophy of fear, and many people have this, and it's not just fear of one thing, but it can be fear of many different things. I used to have a fear of failure. My greatest fears was not being successful. And without knowing it, I unwittingly held myself back. Oh yeah, I had some success, but I could only go so far because I still had fear in my heart. I was being driven by fear. Fear is a choice. It is a choice that you can choose not to have. People have fear of public speaking, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of rejection. How about this one? Fear of poverty. Fear of poverty will always keep you in some form of poverty. I know people who make $10,000 a month and they have fear of poverty, but they have so much potential that if they let that fear go, they will be making six figures a month. Because you making $10,000 a month is poverty level to somebody that makes six figures a month. I remember in my ACN days listening to a training given by Tony Kupas. And Tony Kupas said, I can't believe there's people out there that only make $10,000 a week. I can't imagine living on just $10,000 a week. Now this is all relative. Because to most people, $10,000 a week means you're rich. But to somebody like Tony Kupas, $10,000 a week means you're poor. Your fear will always have a limit and a cap on how far you can grow. As a God-fearing man, I fear nobody, I fear no man, I fear no circumstances. I always give it to the Almighty. It's in His hands because I have the faith and belief that everything will happen because when you have fear of something, you're also afraid to take risks because you're, you're more concerned with what you may lose than what you're possibly going to gain. Having the philosophy of fear also allows you to point blame at everybody else instead of ever taking responsibility for your own actions and I used to do this all the time it was somebody else's fault this person didn't do what they were supposed to do that person didn't do what they said they were gonna do the company let me down customer service wasn't good enough I quit <laughs> see 
When you have the philosophy of performance, you take matters in your own hands. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. It doesn't matter what your family says. It doesn't matter what society says. It doesn't matter what the economy says. It doesn't matter what the news has to say. It doesn't matter what your best friends and lovers and wives and husbands have to say. It doesn't matter who quits on you. It doesn't matter if a company lets you down. It doesn't matter if things don't go according to plan because things will never go according to plan. What matters is what you do and how you respond to any issue that happens in your life. That is the most important thing. Because when you have the philosophy of performance, you will become successful in anything that you do. Anything. You take responsibility for things that happen in your life. See, by having the philosophy of welfare, the philosophy of minimum wage, the philosophy of fear, the philosophy of demand, the philosophy of waiting, I am putting my future in the hands of somebody else. And I will never be number one priority for somebody else besides God. So to make myself the priority philosophy of performance is what guides me. Nobody can take away my work ethic. Nobody can take away my desire. Nobody could take away how hard and how many hours I'm willing to put into something. People ask me, how many hours should I work a week, Brandon, for my business? That's a trick question to me. It's when the job gets done. If that means I need to stay up to 3 a.m., I'm up at 3 a.m. If that means I need to talk to a thousand people, I'm not going to quit because five people said no. I haven't reached a thousand yet. I will never let my future be in the hands of somebody else. And somebody please slap me if the day ever comes where I blame any failure or setback I have on somebody else. That is all irrelevant. That is all to be expected. That's what's called life. But the one thing you will always have 100% control on is your performance, your production. The most reliable hand is the one at the end of your own wrist. And if you can't rely on yourself, how in the world do you think you're going to be able to rely on somebody else? The philosophy of performance will make you a winner in any field that you ever do, in any endeavor that you ever take on you will eventually succeed. The philosophy of quitting shouldn't even be in your vocabulary. Once you understand the philosophy of performance, the philosophy of performance means that you can be in any company and still reach the top no matter what. No matter who's on your team, no matter who leaves you, no matter who quits, no matter what the company does, it's a law. So if you don't have this philosophy, work to adapt this philosophy. Work on yourself more than you work on anything else. The trait of a man is what he does when no eyeballs are on him. Your actions will always speak louder than words. Adopt the philosophy of performance. And I will see you at the top. That's the Brandon Ivy Show. Coming to you back with a new tip of the day. The philosophy of performance. Until next time.